Crossfire starts right now. Tonight on Crossfire, what will it take to fix Obamacare? There is no excuse for what has been a miserable five weeks. Do Tuesday's elections show voters eventually will accept it? Or is it becoming a political disease for Democrats? On the left, Van Jones. On the right, Newt Gingrich. In the crossfire, Senator Bernie Sanders, an Obamacare supporter, and Senator David Vitter, one of its harshest critics. Fixing Obamacare or playing politics, tonight on Crossfire. Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Newt Gingrich on the right. And I'm Van Jones on the left. In the Crossfire tonight, we've got two U.S. Senators. Uh, Bernie Sanders, who supports Obamacare, and David Vitter, who does not. Uh, tonight, Republicans are all jumping up and down on their pogo sticks. They're so happy. They're saying, Obamacare is terrible. It's going to help us win races. Look. If you look at the actual election results, you're going to see a much different story. Here's the truth. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie embraced Obamacare's Medicaid expansion, and he won. Virginia Governor-elect Terry McAuliffe was in a close race. He embraced Obamacare. He won. The guy who spent the whole time fighting Obamacare lost. There is no wonder, therefore, that the president is in Texas tonight arguing that giving millions of people access to health insurance is a good idea and it's still good politics. You have a wonderful fantasy life. <laughs> First of all, Chris Christie said openly he opposed Obamacare. Took the money. Would accept the money because he didn't see any reason to punish the state. But he opposed Obamacare. Second, in Virginia, two weeks ago, Terry McAuliffe was up 15 points. And, and, and Attorney General Cuccinelli turned on the Obamacare issue. And despite being outspent by four to one, he cut that lead from 15 points to under three points in less than two weeks. So I would think if I were a Democrat, I'd be a little worried. And if you look at the Democratic senators up for election, they aren't behaving like they think this is a good deal. I'm sure we'll get into it. In the crossfire, Senator Bernie Sanders, a Vermont independent who supports Obamacare, and Republican Senator David Vitter of Louisiana, who opposes Obamacare. And I, I want to ask you, you know, a number of senators went down to the White House and picked people up for election and have begun to ask the president, these are Democrats, have begun to ask the president to, to draw things out, to open up the bill, to reconsider certain things. Do you think that, given the problems we're having with the website, given the problems we're having with implementation, that it is legitimate to say that some modification has to be made because the schedule is simply not going to be met? Look, over a period of time, it's always good to improve. And uh, while I voted for uh, the Affordable Care Act, let me be very clear. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, I had disagreements with it. I am a single-payer Medicare for all advocate. I believe that the United States should join the rest of the industrialized world and guarantee health care as a right for all people. Uh, I worry very much that at the end of the day, despite <coughs> the fact that we have 48 million people today with no health insurance, we end up spending almost twice as much per person on health care as any other nation without particularly good health care outcomes. So, Newt, my own feeling is we started off with a really bad situation in terms of health care. The Affordable Care Act takes us a step forward. It still leaves some 28 million people uninsured. To my mind, it is still much too complicated. I think we could do better. You know, you raised Medicare. Let me ask you one thing which I just noticed yesterday which involves Medicare, and that is that the Moffitt Cancer Center, which is the premier cancer center in Florida, is being dropped by United Health on their Medicare uh, wraparound provisions because of budget problems. And the question I would raise is, aren't we in fact seeing a drift away from centers of excellence as these various government programs run low on money? And, and it, you're going to see it also, I think, with Obamacare, that they have all these packages that say, well, except you can't go to the Mayo Clinic or except you can't go to MD Anderson because the centers of excellence are more expensive and therefore don't fit into government-run health care. Well, you know, I think you're touching a broader issue about our spending priorities. Uh, I happen to believe that investing in research and development, trying to understand and get a better handle on cancer, Alzheimer's disease, is a good investment for our country. So I would invest more 
uh, into these programs and into the NIH. I'm not sure that my Republican friends agree, but that's what I would do. Well, well let, let me uh, go to you. Sure, I, I assume you are not a single-payer advocate, is that right? No, that's the same okay. assumption. Okay, right. good. So, so I would assume that you actually want the private health insurance to do, to do the job, is that right? Sure, absolutely. Well, there have been these uh, reports coming out now that say the private health insurance are, insurance companies are actually abusing people, uh, uh, blaming Obamacare, but they're actually sending out these notices that are actually false and misleading, tricking people into signing up for uh, much more expensive plans, basically abusing the law. Well, Van, would, would, would you would you if those abuses against? are happening, absolutely, we, we should stop them. But that's not the biggest set of cases out there. The biggest set of cases, for instance, are the 93,000 folks in Louisiana that have gotten truthful, legitimate notices that they're being kicked off the health plan they had. And that goes to the biggest lie of the whole Obamacare debate. The president said over and over and over, if you like the health care plan you have, you can keep it. That's not true. It was never true. And there are 93,000 of my constituents who are getting that note in the mail today to hey, listen, prove that. I, and, and this has been a, a great talking point day after day after day, but here's what I don't it, understand. Look, you, you, I don't care about political talking I, I, points. Listen, you, I care, you care about, about people getting their notices. And reality, but, but here, and that's but here, the reality. But here's, but here's the problem. You now have, and it's coming out now, that these insurance companies are actually, it could be in 93,000 year people, there could be a large percentage of those people who actually are being mistreated. What are you doing ben, to actually let me make the clear. insurance companies if, uh, uh, actually honor If anybody's the law? lying about what's going on, they should be prosecuted criminally if possible. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you the vast majority of those 93,000 cases are cases produced by the core of Obamacare. And that, again, it goes to the biggest lie of the whole debate. Well, well, first of all, uh, a, a couple of things I, I'm curious about. It seems to me that people have been, were being thrown off of insurance programs and insurance plans for a very long time before Obamacare. In fact, we had a situation where that was happening so regularly that people were up in arms about it. I didn't hear you or any other people in the Republican Party being concerned about those people being thrown off. So is there, is there an inconsistency on your part? No, if there isn't. If because... throw somebody off and they do it for corporate greed, it's okay with you. If they do it because of a regulation someplace, you hate it. How does that make sense? Uh, look, we had plenty of solutions put forward from the conservatives side targeted one of them being the health mandate, mandate right uh, no not for me absolutely not never uh, targeted fixes that could have made a difference but throwing out the whole system the baby but with the bathwater is not the way to do it and these 93,000 Louisianians are a perfect example and that's not a glitch with the rollout that's not a problem with a website that's the core of the Obamacare law and I think we're moving to that phase two now of folks realizing the problems. It's more than if, a website. If I could just jump in. It's more than David, a website. It's the core of the law. You have a great state, and I've been there, and it's a beautiful state and great people. Uh, but 20 percent of your people live in, in poverty. Uh, about 20 percent of the people in Louisiana have no health insurance at all. And when you vote against uh, the Affordable Care Act, what you're telling those people that they're not going to get health insurance. So no, we're talking I'm not. About Absolutely not, Bernie. What I'm saying... Wait, let me finish. Let me finish. As you well know, your state, and I gather you, have rejected the idea that Medicaid should be expanded in Medicaid. Other Republican governors have done the same. So it seems to me that when you have people who are working really hard, trying to make a living, who desperately need health insurance, and with the Affordable Care Act said, we're going to expand Medicaid, and you and others are saying, oh, no, no, it's okay for over 200,000 people in Louisiana not to take it. I think that's wrong. Bernie, the biggest reason those folks are uninsured is cost. And cost is going up, and it's going up even further under Obamacare. You know, I think the first maxim of health care reform is if you think health care is expensive now, just wait till David, you didn't answer the question. And, well, let me finish. No, just let me just ask you something. Medicaid, how much does it cost for somebody to go on Medicaid? This is a federal program I'm, which costs zero dollars. So you're telling somebody in your state who can get finally get health care that they can't afford IE, which doesn't cost them anything, it, that you're not going to accept that. It doesn't cost zero dollars to society, and it doesn't right. cost zero dollars to the state of Louisiana. It truly it does. Had, for the first three years, it does cost zero dollars. And then we get a <laughs> significant cost. Not that, a significant cost. Ninety percent is picked up by the but, federal government. Bernie, let me explain Louisiana budgets. We've been cutting health care and higher education for four years, but, and you want to put an additional cost and an David, what I want to do for that are Louisiana, to more cuts. I want in Louisiana, in Vermont, and all over this country, people to have health care. I would be concerned if 20 percent so of the people in my state. Well, you got 20 percent. And Obamacare of is not leading in that direction. We're, we're, well, the expansion gonna, of Medicaid would have helped the people of Louisiana. We're, we're going to come back to this. We're going to come back to this. But Senator Vitter has a plan 
that will be extremely popular with voters and wildly unpopular with Congress. We'll ask him about it next. Welcome back. In the crossfire tonight, Senators Bernie Sanders and David Vitter. Back in 1994, Congress agreed to apply to itself all the laws it imposes on everybody else. Senator Vitter is proposing exactly that when it comes to Obamacare. His idea is to have members of Congress and their staff, as well as presidential appointees and the White House staff, buy health insurance from the Obamacare exchanges without extra subsidies. After all, what's good enough for ordinary voters ought to be good enough for the people who represent them in Washington. Now, Senator Sanders, I mean, given your really in many ways populist background, isn't it fair to say that the, the self-employed professionals, the small businesses and others who are going to be forced into these exchanges without any kind of underlying subsidy, they get, a, they get an income-based subsidy, but they don't get some underlying subsidy, that having the Congress and other decision makers in Washington treated the same would be a form of equity? Well, I think what's a form of equity is to treat federal employees the way every other major corporation in America treats its employees. So if you're at Microsoft, if you're at IBM and you work for those companies, they pay a significant part of your health care costs. It's called an employer contribution to health care. Federal government has always done that, and I think it should. To say to an employee, I know it's good politics, we can beat up on the federal government, everybody hates Congress, it's a good soundbite. But the reality is we have people in your office, David, in my office, are working making thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year. And to say, no, you're going to have to pay 100% of the cost of your health care, unlike people in every other major uh, employment environment in America, I think is dead wrong. It's unfair. And also what it does, Newt, it sets a really bad example for the rest of corporate America. So you're IBM, you're a big corporation, you say to your workers, well, you know what? Look what the federal government is doing. They're not providing any employer-based help to your health care, we'll do the same. Bad idea. Bernie, let's forget about politics. Let's start with the law. The Obamacare statute mandates this. This isn't no. my original idea. It is in the Obamacare statute that every member of Congress and all official staff go to the exchange, and there is no mention whatsoever it's with this language. huge taxpayer-funded subsidy. And guess what? That proposal was made. That language was there. It was specifically not included. And no other American gets this huge taxpayer funded. Wait a minute, subsidy. David, no That's other just American. That's flat out wrong. No, every employee of a large corporation. No American, gets... go, no American going to the exchanges gets this huge yeah. subsidy. You get a subsidy so based at... on income. And the whole point of this provision, which is in the statute, this isn't just my idea, it's law. The whole point of this provision is Congress should face the same reality and the same experience I as 8 million plus other Americans who are forced against their will into the exchanges. But I just think this is terrible. I just think well, it's change the statute, no, man. No, no, well, change the law no, because no, that's it, where it is. It's not regard to Congress. No, I want to expand it, it to the administration. Silent. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, want, I do want to expand it to the administration. That's not the law now. But it is the law with regard to Congress. Well, first of all, the, uh, it, it's been interpreted the opposite way of what you're saying. So you feel that way, but others don't. But, but, but here's what I think is awful about what you're saying. You have kids who come up here to Washington, D.C. They could go work in corporate America. They could do other things. They come here because they're a part of the give a darn party. They, they, some of them are, are Democrats and Republicans. They give a darn about their country. And they come here, they, they work really hard for you and for this senator, and for you to say to them that for, I think for political purposes, you're going to take away the, uh, the, their employer subsidy that every other employer is, is giving their employees, I just think that's awful. Well, again, Van, we had this debate, and that's in the well, statute. Well, what about those kids? What about the kids who come up here uh, uh, and I think folks hard? who make are the you law, punish them members and point? staff, should have to eat their own cooking. I think that's important because of fairness, but this, and I think it's important for a very practical reason. Let me tell you where you're right. But you know, wrong. David, because David, because sooner laws apply to Earl, Congress and staff you are saying that's the same the law. way as other Americans. You, you, you are saying that's the law your own some way. You right. are saying that's the law. Many of your Republican colleagues yeah, nobody else are not saying that that's the law. Bernie, most read, of, read, read, David, read the what statute. what I'm telling you is most people in the Congress, including many Republicans, don't agree with you. Yeah. And I think, you know, Vance, they don't like the outcome. Federal employees should not be treated differently than other employees uh, in, in corporate America. Historically, as you know, forever, 
The federal government has done what other large employees do and play an employee earned Bernie, as you know, I'm not talking about all federal employees. I'm talking about policymakers and folks who You're draft the law. talking about kids who are making $30,000 a year working in your office. If they make $30,000 a year, they do get a subsidy, just like anyone else making $30,000 a year going to the exchange. Yeah, but you, if they do get an income-based subsidy, so they would get help. Why, why don't you? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I was just going to ask a practical question about the history of the law because I'm confused. I thought amendments were offered that would have solved this, and they were defeated. Correct. Language was there. I thought the legislative which specifically history. included a subsidy, and yeah. that language was not put in the bill. And language was silent. put in the bill in contrast, which did not include that. The, 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 the uh, bill is silent with regard to this. You're right. There's legislative history, but there's also an interpretation that goes the other way, and a lot of Republicans agree with you. And you can find a lawyer in this the, town hey, to interpret that blue is green. But, you but, know but that. Let me ask you a question. That isn't cover right. for okay. violating and ignoring the law. Okay, so you you want the, the, this uh, to be fixed. Reed has offered you an opportunity to have an, a vote on this and to get this out of the way. He's and you've offered been, me and you've been demagoguing rule. it. He's offered me a gag, it's a gag rule. rule. I get one vote, vote and I can't. How many votes talk do you want to have? Put, well, how many votes does he want to have on if, his nomination? If, if it's such, if it's he, such a he, great last week, he filed a, filed a motion to reconsider on two nominations that he lost. Is he going to bypass that? Is he never going to file motions to reconsider again? He does that twice a month. So you so will if take he a will vote. Forego, if he will forego that right as a senator, I will. I think you, I, I think David's hesitant about a vote because you're going to lose the vote, and you should lose the vote. But the point is, David, I don't know the exact number. We're talking few hundred people, a few thousand people, right? That's what sure. we're talking about. That's what, you know, we're talking about here. The reality is that what we are trying to do in this country and what the real issue is, you got 48 million people who have no health insurance. The and Republicans, I have to say this, it's easy to criticize and God knows that criticism of Obamacare is, is valid and we should do it. But what's your plan? What are you going to do about providing health care to 48 million people who have no health insurance Bernie, right let me now? Just address what you has directly the, on this? Let me finish. This. Let me finish. You tell me. And Newt, you may want to jump in. You were speaker. Where is the Republican ideas so that the United States joins the rest of the world let, and makes health care a right for all people? Let people's. me start me by saying why my proposal is important, because the sooner those few thousand folks walk in the same shoes as Americans go into the exchange, yeah. the sooner Washington's going to start getting it right. And we don't do that now. We're treated well, like your definition of getting it right class. is to do nothing well, no, about no, 48 million not. people who have health insurance. Wait, wait, absolutely. Let me, not. let me answer that at a couple of levels that you may not like. First of all, everybody wants to t focus on insurance, not on care. The fact is, in the British National Health Service, you are more likely to die, much more likely to die of breast cancer. You are more likely to die of prostate cancer. These are just statistical facts. Medicaid is so badly run in much of America that uninsured people have about the same health outcomes as Medicaid recipients. I mean, nobody in, in the Congress wants to talk about how do you reform the care part of health care as opposed to the insurance part. There are a lot of ideas for how you could solve this. Uh, John Goodman has gone around this country for 15 years saying you can solve it with a tax credit. And there are a lot of ways to do it that return power to the individual. You don't have to have a Washington-centered system. So uh, I, th I think there's a certain amount of well, let, know, let me just say this. false argument. It is, you know, I don't know the statistics about the U.K. on those issues. But the fact of the matter is that compared to many other countries in terms of our health care outcomes, in terms of life expectancy, in terms of infant mortality, we are doing worse. You talk about the U.K., you know what? We are spending about two and a half times per person okay. of what they are spending. All right, well, listen, uh, stay here. We're not done. Uh, uh, we, we are going to have a ceasefire and see if there's anything in here that we can actually agree with, with each other on. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, and we also want you at home to weigh in on today's fireback question. How do you think that Obamacare has affected the Democrats in yesterday's elections? Tweet hurt or help using hashtag crossfire. We're going to give you those results after this break.